Hello from wherever you are, and welcome to Let's Play Games. I'm John McFarland, Adult Services Librarian for National Public Libraries, and I hope you'll join me in learning or rediscovering some of the more common and uncommon games out there. This time, we're going to go into a different style of tile. We've previously covered Mahjong, which is a tile-based game on this series. We've covered playing cards extensively, but this is the first time we are going to cover one of the most well-known and well-played tile games out there, Dominoes. Let's get stuck in. Dominoes are one of the most popular games on the planet, partially because of its simplicity, its ease of use. You don't need an incredibly a lot to learn about the basics of how to play dominoes. Uh, can you count to six? Can you recognize the number six, five, four, three, two, one, and blank? Then aside from that, you're pretty good to go as a concept. So I've stacked them here. Uh, each of them has a subsequent blank. So I'll scooch these up as I do this. And it's just a nice little triangle here. And that clicking sound and clacking sound, you will have to get used to a dad. Uh, but notice this goes in an increased amount all the way through six by six. And each of them does have a subsequent blank. So in total here, we have 28 dominoes. And for the demonstration I'm gonna have here today, I'm gonna take you in what's kind of like four levels of increasing complexity, but I'll get the first two out of the way first. This is going to be block domino and draw domino. So each of these will be an added element to where we get to some of the more modern games. There are versions of dominoes that have uh, teams and partnerships like traditional card games like Whist. Uh, we will not be doing that today. We we'll probably will cover that in a future episode. But what we're doing here is figuring out who goes first in this game. And for this, I'm going to simulate three players. So here, here, and here. Now what you do is you're going to flip all of these. And if you're familiar with tile-based games like Mahjong pieces, uh, know that all of them flip. And you're going to have to do what's called washing. And all this is is moving around. And if something flips over, that's fine. Just flip it back over. And here, what we're going to do is we're going to select five tiles right here. So for our three players, what you're going to do is you're going to pick one of these tiles. So let's say I'm picking first. I can pick any of these. And what's going to matter is who has the most number of pips, which I'll show you this. This has 11 pips or dots, however you wish to refer to it. We're looking for the highest number. So no one's going to have the 11 this. So let's say I'll pick this one. That's three and five. So just a little bit of basic math, eight. The person to my left picks this one, six. So I'm still in the lead here. And then the last person picks, they're going to pick this one, nine. So now this person will go first. They will be the basic dealer of this. And then play will continue on in a clockwise direction. So most Western style games work in a clockwise direction. So now we're gonna put it back in, wash it again, and then we're gonna deal. So the reason why I'm showing you two games first is because uh, this one can go very quickly, but it teaches you the basic concepts of domino and we'll add to it as we go along. So each person, well, we're gonna go ahead and deal out, is gonna get five. Four, five, five, and five. Nope. That last one needs to go to them. And we're going to take all of these ones that don't get used here. So for the purposes of this, I'm going to flip these over. And you can organize these however you want in your hand. Um, you're not going to be showing this 
to anybody else. So we've got uh, double six, double four, two, three. Uh, and we're going to put the smallest number down here to try and keep it a little organized. So the three, four, and three, five. We've got the three, one, three, blank. Uh, two, six, double three, five. And then here, so you, again, can organize it in any way that's comfortable for you, uh, but for this demonstration, we're going to see what happens here. So this player will be going first. We're gonna put one in the middle, flip it over. So that is this piece in the middle. Aside from that, we're just gonna pull all of these to the side. So for block, this is the reason the game goes quickly, is if you don't have anything that connects to these, don't have anything to play, your turn is passed. The goal of this game is to either be one of two things. The first to get rid of all of your dominoes, or to be the person with the fewest pips on your remaining will lead to you winning the hand. So as this person starts, they've got a two and a blank. So now is where you get into the choices of seeing what you have in your hand. I've got some three options here. Um, I can try and hope that no one else has a three. Obviously you can see there are people with connections. There's going to be the decision of what do you want to get rid of and how do you connect it? So for me, what I'm gonna do is, this is my highest pip count here. So I'm just gonna put this right here. We have to match it end to end and just place it like this. Now, what you'll do from here is play will go on to me. And I'm gonna go ahead and place this double two right here. And when you play a double two, you're gonna place it crosswise like this. Uh, it's still gonna be the end of a two, but it's usually a signifier that a double has been played. So now we're gonna move on to here. Either they can play a blank, which they don't have available, but they do have a two. It'll be played like this. Notice that I'm moving as I go along. You're gonna run out of space at some point. In the future games, we're definitely gonna run out of space. I'll show you what happens when we get to there. So now we have the threes. And that's a good time to play this double right here. Get rid of six more pips out of their hand. Doesn't really connect much to anything else. And you've still got that blank available, so you've got two options depending on what gets played on. They can't connect with three here. They've got some fours to get rid of, so they'll go ahead and play that. Uh, here, now they get to decide, do I play the double four? Do I play this three right here? What fives have been played? On this end, if I know that I've got some of the fours here, but a five is free, the biggest concern I have right now is this double six. I'm really needing a six to show up to get rid of this, because otherwise this is 12 points that goes to whoever wins the hand if I don't win it. So we're gonna play this five. Now there's no four option, but there is a five, so they'll keep going here. Now they can either connect with the one that's over here, or the fours that are over here. Mm. We'll go ahead and get rid of the higher point. Since I'm gonna go ahead and turn it, you're just gonna place it like this. Instead of placing it like the doubles, it's a straight line. You're just gonna place it on down so that way play can continue. Uh, two and a one, they don't have anything to connect, so their turn is passed. They are blocked from playing. If all three players are blocked from playing, the hand ends. They, however, are not blocked. So we're gonna keep it going like this. Uh, they're blocked from playing at this point because they don't have a two or a three. Now this person can go because they have a three. However, this dealt right into this person's hand. They are now out. Because they're now out, players will count the number of pips that are on their total remaining. So that's 12, 16, 20, so that's 20 points. And then this is five, 10, so that'd be another 10 points. Uh, it doesn't matter who it comes from, just matters that it's coming at all. So that would be 30 points to this player for winning one hand and expose. This is a backbreaker a lot of times. You wanna get rid of that first. So from here, notice that the game goes quickly, but you also are limited with the fact that 
you can sometimes have a really unlucky element and that ruins the whole process. So let's bring these dominoes back in and we are going to play draw now real quick. So give me one second to get this all washed and dealed and then I will show you how this works. So real quick with the draw, this version, we bring these pieces back in. If you are unable to play, you have to draw from the bone yard, which is basically a giant collective discard pile. So instead of you being blocked from moving, you have to draw, increasing what's in your hand, but also potentially giving you the opportunity to play something. So what you can do is you can draw from the bone yard, and if you can play it, you can play it. So in theory, it cuts both ways but it also means you have the same number in your hand. You don't lose anything. So we've got a blank and a three. And now that this person has gone first, play passes to where I will be the first one placing. So I've got some threes here. I've got a blank. I'm gonna play this six right here. Play will move on to here. They've got a double blank. Over here, they can play the six. Then it's either the two or the blank. Do this two right here. Uh, this person has three, so they're gonna have to draw from the boneyard. They don't have anything to play. So it goes in their hand, their turn is missed. You can also do versions of this in which they have to draw until they can play something, uh, but that could mean your hand gets pretty high in terms of count. Uh, so we're just gonna do the one for the sake of this game. Now we're back to blank or a three. I'll play this blank here. Uh, two or three. They've got this one to play. Then we're over here to two or a four. We've got a four to play. Now we're to two or a five. Play this five, kind of hoping that that two can stay open in some way. So twos, neither player's gonna be able to play, so in theory it could work out. Nope, no help. And a double two. So they're gonna play here. I'll just do it like this to make sure it goes in the middle, but we'll start angling it down here. Now they're really hoping for a three and they can go out. Uh, four, no help. I have to draw from the boneyard again. No help. They've got a four to play. This person will now have to draw. That's usually a pretty big yikes when you are stuck with the double and you're dependent on one thing being played here, especially because with the threes, I know for sure one, two, three have already been played. As more things are played, the lesser you have available to go with. So they're stuck. Uh, we'll do this one with the six. No help, but they're lucky. Draw here. That's a six. Uh, let's actually play this one first since I know the ones are kind of at a premium. Three, which is actually no help over here. Double six, this person's gotten really unlucky. Uh, double three. And you can snake this into whatever direction you want because notice I'm already almost running out of space. Uh, we'll do this one here, then you can sort of do it like this. So it can still sometimes get into a slightly funky shape. I'd love to draw here. Five will work with a blank, but this person has a blank. So I would win this hand. And five, six, seven, eight, plus 12, so 20, 28 points to me. So if we were still playing a common round, they got 30 points, I would have 28, they would have zero. Now I'm sure you're asking, what happens when you run out of pieces in the boneyard? This is technically plausible. If that happens, you revert back to the rules of block. Can no one else play? Well, the hand ends, you deal with the pip count. So let me take a step back. I'm gonna reshuffle, we're going to deal it out again, and we're gonna increase the complexity a step. One sec. So 
as we start talking about the game of dominoes, we have to talk about the pieces. So the pieces here are made out of like some modern plastics, but they used to be made straight up out of bone, which has carried on to now we discover the draw pile is the bone yard. And that's in reference to the original kind of design of these. They were also made out of uh, ebony, ivory. In the 1850s or so was when we saw the first big advancement in domino technology, when they started to be made out of a material called bakelite, which was a slightly hardened stone. These also had potential to sometimes be flammable, which did not lend well. So we started seeing the more modern plastic pieces later on. But as dominoes became more popular as a tavern game or a pub game, to just have it everywhere, they needed someplace to make sure they were in wide production. So Bakelite was the answer for quite some time. Welcome back. So now that we've discussed block and draw, it's time to up the complexity a bit. This one's going to require a little bit more math and some basic multiplication, but as usually, if you can count in multiples of five, you're good for this one. So um, we had them start at this first one, I started the second one, so we'll have this person. The goal of this game is not necessarily to get your pieces upended as fast as possible. This one, you play with a bit more strategy. How? You need multiples of five. You will play first domino here. And if it ends at a multiple of five on the opposite ends, you get points requisite to that. So there's a blank and there's five. It's a multiple of five. This player instantly gets five points. Not bad, right? Gets even better. As it moves to this player, notice they have this double five here. They can place it here. So now the opposite ends are this double right here, 5, 10, 15. So off of this person playing a multiple of 5, which is a nice start, now this person has 15 points. So this is much less about getting rid of your pieces and discarding as fast as possible. This one has a little bit more planning to how can I get to multiples of 5. So we're at 5, 15, now it's my turn. And I've got a five here, but I can't play it in a way that ends in a multiple of five. It would be really nice if I could do this and then even better this, and that would be another 15 points, but we can't do that here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play off of this. So now we need to do the counting. Five on this end, one on this end for a total of six. It's not a multiple of five, nothing scores. Womp, womp, womp. Play moves on. Now, if they could find a way to connect to make it a four, they could make it 10, or they could play a blank to make it another five. This is where that strategy element comes into play. So let's take a look here. Uh, they've got a five that they can play here, or a one they can play here. You're, idea of what you keep is also a tad different because you're wanting to think, okay, what else is out there that I could use? Uh, I kind of want to keep this in case there's another blank. Because if another blank gets played and it comes back to me, that's an instant five. So I'll hold this. That'll be a one right there connecting on. So three plus five equals eight, not a multiple of five. So we'll go back here. Uh, three ends. That's actually the only play. So we're back to zero, five. That's another five points for this player right here. So in the course of just one round, this person's gotten 20 points, this person's gotten five. I've got nothing. So now we're back to blank and five. I have to play something if I am able to. There's no like withholding. So it will be the equivalent of a penalty if you don't play something. Uh, so four, which is right here. Just trying to get this spaced out. Uh, they don't have a three, so they're gonna draw. And that's gonna be no help. We're gonna go to here. They don't have a three, they don't have a five, so they'll draw. Also no help. 
And yes, this is going to be worth zero points when we're counting pips at the end of a hand. Uh, so we're gonna go over here. Uh, there is a multiple of five. And as a matter of fact, that makes three plus two, five. They could have played uh, here, but that would have been 11. So this is where it really pays to see what you have left and pay attention to those numbers. So that'll be another five, so 20, 10, zero. Uh, and they've got a way to go out here. Um, now they're gonna play, play this one right here, just because it's a lot of points to have in the hands. Um, and actually, let me look here. Two. So let's talk about doubles real quick. Uh, this counts as four. So four plus three, seven. Some versions only count it as the two regardless, but uh, most versions I've played count it as doubles. So this would actually be 12. And if I could play it like this, that would be an instant 15. So you're not typically gonna get more than that 15 count, typically with some rare exceptions. Um, you'd have to get like the double four and the double 12 together to get 20. Uh, so you're kind of still set with a small maximum of points. So we're gonna go ahead and do this right here. That's nine. They've got a six end here, a three end, they have to play. So that'll be 12, three, 15. So obviously since your hand is hidden, they don't know what you're gonna play. So that's 15 points for me. That's a rapid swing. So now we're to 20, 10, 15. Not bad. That, there's gonna be parity and a back and forth throughout this game. And you're playing to typically a certain number of points. Uh, 35 is pretty popular. 61 is one of the more common point totals, but you can agree to whatever point total you want. So I played that double six and this person can actually go out. There's no extra scoring. So now we're gonna do the remaining pip count like we did with block and draw. So let's just bring it all together because it doesn't matter who it comes from. So that's four, two, six, eight, zero, 12, 18, 18, eight, and 26. So now you think, oh, 26 points, right? This is the catch. You're gonna take this and you're going to divide it by five. So 26, is divided by five into five times with one remainder. That'll be five points to this player right here. So notice by the end of the game, this person had 20, this person ended up with 15, I ended up with 15. Not bad. Play will continue with the same version here. And one thing I will let you know is that remainder in division here is actually gonna apply here. If you can round down so it's the one or the two away from the nearest five you're going to go to that if it's for example 18 you would round up to 20. so part of considering where you're at is how many pips are remaining on the field what's been played and this way you've got a small point total that can fairly quickly add up now let's take a step back i want to add one more layer of complexity onto this but first gonna tell you a little bit more about this game. Where's the origin of these domino pieces? They were originally referred to as guat pai, which translates to uh, bone tiles. They would also be known as pu pai, which would be a gambling plaques, I believe is the direct translation. But these were developed in China, uh, originally carved out of the bone, and all of the tile pieces had actually a specific reference to some element of the, we would see in the Yixing with the stones or the lines with the specific breaks, had a specific reference to some element of nature. Same implied here. For example, the 4-4 four four was a direct reference to the spirit of man. Uh, one five was heaven, and so on and so forth. This ended up becoming something that was a little bit more regulated over time as it became the gambling plaques. 
and its development was slightly stunted for a while, but kept its popularity and was more often than not most easily replicated. So how did it make it out of China? More on that in a minute. We've now gone through block, the draw, muggins. Now we're gonna go to all fives. It's basically the same game as before with one slight addition. Notice that we've been playing this game in a very linear way. Left and right were the only options. You couldn't do up, down. What happens when up, down is an option? That makes for a little bit of chaos and a whole lot more points. When we were playing the last round, there was a theoretical maximum that would require the double six and double four to be played opposite for 20 points. Here, you've got four dimensions, which means there is a much higher theoretical maximum. You can at least get 25 for sure. Rare, but it still can occur because you've got different amounts. Now, let's, we're all the way back to this person plays first. They don't have anything ending in a multiple of five, but they're gonna figure out what they want to play. I'm gonna do this five that's right here, which is kind of risky, but actually, no. Let's be, let's be smart about this. Uh, the six and the one. So here is the center axis. You can technically go off of the up or down area connecting to one of these pieces, but you've got to go a particular direction. So let's see here. And by the way, there's a maximum of four. You can't do a crazy train of different things. That's another game. So here, uh, I don't have any ones or sixes to connect. So I have to draw, connect here. That is three. Over here, uh, do I have a one that could work? Yes, I do. That makes two and three equals five, five points. Over here, we come back to, here's the catch. I can play these doubles because I have to, but instead of it being like this and another five, this is actually seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it doesn't count for any sort of points. This is the kind of back and forth that you have to consider the game. But because you have an obligatory play, only so much you can do. So now we're gonna go back here. There's three, ah, uh, there's seven right there. Either of which is not really any sort of help. So one, two, three, four, eight, doesn't count for anything. Now, I don't have anything off the four. I do have something off the two. But if I wanted to add a third layer to things, I am technically able to do so. So what we're gonna do is for demonstration purposes, have this right here. We know that this still connects, but this is our centerpiece. So what I can do is that's eight right here. I can play with that third dimension. That makes 10. So adding this other layer of complexity allows you to spread out a little further and develop a little bit more complexity of the game. So now we've got, this does not count yet, uh, but it will next time something's played here. So we've got 10 here, keeping that six, five. We'll add that other layer. This is now 15 the scores can really come up here. So it's a much more chaotic game. And notice how, okay, well that's 15. Let's make it 20. This is where it can get a little hectic and chaotic. 20 took a theoretical maximum in the Muggins version. In five all, 20 is more attainable. We just kind of lucked out at being here. So now we're back to here. So now we've got a count here. We've got 15, 16, 17. Shucks, does not help here. So now we've got to keep in mind of, okay, what's left? How can we play? And we've got the double blank. There's only one viable play, which is here. So we're up to 19. So five, 10, 15, 19, and zero. 
doesn't count for anything. So if I'm at 19, I would love if I had a one pip here, but I do not. I need something in order to get things lowered. Hmm. And I can either do, I've got one of these blanks here. And I've got the four to the two. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of these blanks. There's not many threes. Actually, we'll do the two since three twos have already been played. That makes things a little more dangerous. Uh, we'll go down here and that's a three. Nothing they can play off because they've got the double zero, but they draw five. And then we'll just, you do the same sort of twisting to make sure everything fits. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that as well so we don't get in the middle of the bone yarn here. Uh, now there's the four two option. Uh, another two has been played, so I'm starting to get worried about that. We'll play that. Actually, we'll play it like this here, since I know there are fewer twos that are out there. Double six, no help. But they do draw a one. So four, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Close. Uh, once again, no double zero there, but they draw a four. So again, you keep counting along and you can just keep a mental count as you go along. This I know is 12, five, 10, 12. Uh, and here you've got a stopping point where they can discard and then they would be out. And you're gonna do the same thing as you did before. Count the pips, that would be 12 and divide it by the nearest five, unless you can go up if you're more than halfway there. If this had even one pip, it would count for another, but this is just gonna count for two points. So this is the style of game where it actually pays to take your time with it, figure out the nearest multiple of five, and really rack up some points. So through these first couple of demonstration games, this is the basics of most domino style games. Everything connects literally in some form or fashion here. But there are more increasingly difficult ways to play. But I got to step back. We can cover that next time. So for the longest time, dominoes were in Asia and predominantly over there in that specific space. Along trade routes, over centuries, dominoes progressively, as they were able to be created and made and developed, uh, made it into, in first, Italy, uh, and started to become a more popular game, hence why some of the more modern domino versions come from Italy and France specifically. Well, dominoes are now one of the most popular games at a pub or tavern in the UK. How did it get there? I have to take you to the Napoleonic Wars. So those who were captured in the Napoleonic era as a part of the French army would typically be taken over to England as prisoners of war. And during this time, this was before a lot of the major Geneva conventions and rights of prisoners of war. This is when a lot of it got developed. The French prisoners of war were given allowances and rations, but they could barter to increase those rations. Dominoes was one of their ways of doing so. They would make it out of the traditional bone or ebony or whatever they could get their hands on, create domino sets and sell them. And they sold fairly quickly to where even after the Napoleonic era, the concept of dominoes was well entrenched and stayed. More on that later. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for tuning in. Next time we'll be covering dominoes again, but I think it's time now that we have the basics down to up the stakes. You wanted more? Next time, Mexican train. See you next time.